Okay, so this is going to be another live type of dem demonstration where you're going to hear me stutter, you're going to hear me mess things up, and you're only going to hear me on the left channel, maybe. We'll see about that. Um, but anyway, this is my channel strip in action. So first, the way I like to use lava. So if you don't know, lava basically, it... It converts the sound of one microphone to another one. So, for example, uh, I actually recorded this track on a Shure SM81. So, on the left side, you choose Shure SM81. And then on the right side, you pick from all these different microphone types. And the idea is that I, I don't know what the actual microphone sounds like. I've never used most of these. That's just a fact. But what matters is, does it sound better than the original? And if I play this bypassed and then I'll, I'll put it on, you can hear the difference. Bypassed. Not a bad recording. I actually have to increase my volume now. I thought I had it up earlier and I did, but anyway, let's see. Yeah, so that just adds some heft to the sound. And what I'll do is I'll show you what I do for these other ones from scratch. So click this where it says off on the from section. Choose which microphone you used. That's the important part. And then I'm going to start with, I, I'll, just, I'll just start with AKG. Now the one thing I don't like about this plugin, and I said it on the other video, is that there should be arrows left and right so that it's way easier to flick through these. The other thing I don't like about this plugin, you see where it says oversampling? For some reason they put it on eco mode to begin with. It should be on 1x. I have to click that every single time. I could technically save a default preset, but then that might screw up a future update. So <laughs> I just am used to it by now. Anyway, AKG, let's listen to the difference. I don't like it, so I'll move on to the next mic. Nope, sounds muddy. I'll try this one. Nope, made it sound worse. Also made it sound worse. Now this I do like, so I'm gonna keep this one. Notice I have four lavas, I'm sorry, one, two, three, four, uh, so five lavas total, and so, what I'd like to do is pick my favorite mic. So this one was the Brower Phantom, or sorry, Brawner VM1. And okay, so that's good. At this point, I'm gonna save my project and then move on to the next one. And the reason I have Lava ZL open for these four and then the regular Lava down here is because when you use the ZL versions, yes, it does take up more CPU, but the important thing is, if you look down here, where it says um, samples, SPLS, so the, the ZL version uses 198 samples of buffer, and the full lava uses 3,444. It uses less CPU because of that buffer, but I don't want to have five lavas open that are going to be eating up that buffer. It can just really mess things up. So um, I'm going to move on to putting this on. So I already loaded up Shure SM81. And I'm going to start off where I left off. And so this is the next one. I don't think I'm going to like this mic. From what I remember, it's not good for um, making muddy sources brighter. 
Yeah, I was right. So next one. That one's okay, but it's not as bright as I'd like it to be. I already went through the Brawners, but and and these microphones are like two, three, four thousand dollars a piece. Listen to this. I was actually shocked by what I heard. Not a fan. That's better, but still muddy. Here's classic, Phantom Classic. Now that sounds better. Acceptable, um, but I already have another Brawner, so I, well, I'll, I'll keep it just for this, just so I save more time. And then finally, I don't know, let's go down here to the ELA. Actually, no, I wanted to show you guys so they've added models since Lava was first released. The SE Electronics, two microphones from them. By the way, I did offer to send a large part of my microphone collection. Essentially everything except maybe the microphone I'm using right now. Um, because I need it to record, mic to, uh, record voiceovers and other things. Um... But anyway, I want to send them the SE7 in particular, but um, anyway, didn't work out. So that one was okay, but here's what I really, really liked. So this is a, actually a microphone that I have did not even know existed that SE Electronics sells. It's like a, a $1,000 um, small condenser microphone, and yeah. I'll bypass it while it's playing. Yeah, so I think that that actually does improve the sound. So my last step is to just go through all these and hear which one I like the best. Narrow it down. Okay, so I'm going to drag this up here. It's between these two. Now, if I wanted to, I could honestly just keep going through these different mic models. I, I don't mind the Telefunken, but it's it's just not my cup of tea right now. Actually, my least favorite one would be the uh, Phantom Classic. So what I'm going to do is choose one more microphone. I'll go to the Neumanns. I'll go to the KM184. I should mention that the Shure SM81 is a small diaphragm condenser microphone, and I found that if you have a certain type of microphone, it translates, or I should say it converts or transforms to similar style microphones better um, than to go, let's say, from a large diaphragm dynamic microphone to a small diaphragm condenser. It, it doesn't work as well. It's okay, but just not as good. Not liking it. That's not bad. I'll try the Neumann 67, sorry, U67. A little too muddy. I'll try Vintage B for the U67. These are two different microphones. Nope, too muddy still.
Not liking it. Okay. So I will try some other Neumanns. If this was a busy mix, this microphone actually might might work. But since it's not, I'm going to uh, try another one. Oh, wow. I like, I think I might like this one the best so far. And to be honest with you, if I pick this, I may not even need to use the equalizer. So... <laughs> I may choose not to use this just for that reason alone, but this is kind of the sound I'm going for. My goodness, that sounds good. Okay, one more choice making sure I disable my previous ones whoops forgot to enable it kind of like that okay so let me just go through them one more time so you guys can hear you know what this is capable of doing and I'll, I'll, I'll put my favorite one at the bottom of the list now so actually I'll put my two favorites at the bottom just so I can show you guys like you know good to best just enhances the, the, the captured sound. Yeah, I do like that. It's honestly hard to decide between the, what's this, the Neumann, whoops, the M149, the second one, B. It's hard to decide between this one and the Brauner VM1. I'm, I'm going to go with the Brauner just because I, I always use Neumann stuff. So I'll just delete these now. Let me hear it one more time. Hold on. If you turn your volume up, you can really just hear the refinement. Or if you're wearing headphones, I'm sure you can hear the difference. But basically what Lava does is it gives you a better starting point than if you didn't have this. I'll, I'll have a bypass and then I'll add it.
Yeah, I think the Neumann does sound better, but I'm going to go with the Brawner VM1. And for the final plug-in, the, the, um, I'm sorry, the, this one, we're going to put the Brawner on. And that's about it. So now I can delete this one. And one last listen to the one that I would normally, that I would choose. We'll just say I would choose this for if this was a busy mix and I was going for a final result. But this sounds so good that I don't want to choose it. <laughs> Again, I'll show you before and after. Wow. So... <laughs> All right, so we're going with the Brawner, and then I'm gonna show you just briefly what Regate can do. This is a noise gate plugin, and basically what that does is, let's say in the beginning of this track, and I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is make the track width a lot larger now, and then what I'm gonna do is zoom in by holding Shift and pressing the up arrow over and over and over. So in the beginning of this track, there's this like, I think. Um, I think it just sounds like the the edge of the guitar was hit. Yeah, there we go. Or maybe it was a piece of paper. I have no idea. But let's say I wanted to get rid of that. Also, there's noise. There is noise. If you turn your volume way up, you can hear it. Just room noise. So what Regate allows you to do is essentially just mute that. And anything below this threshold... Uh, knob, which by the way, I think if you hold shift, no, it's control. If you hold control and if you have a mouse scroll wheel, which you should in the year 2023, um, it can go by tenth of a decimal, which I believe is the most precise that it can go. And the idea is that I want to get it just high enough so that this little we'll call it an artifact, an unwanted piece of audio is muted. You ready? Okay, it's muted th at that point. So I'm gonna, br I just brought the threshold down so it doesn't mute. Okay, and if you watch the audio, see how it goes up to that? So I'm, I'm basically gonna slide this up so that's just above that. But if I didn't have that visual indicator, I could just listen to it. The noise is gone, but that no that the I should say the room noise is gone, but that sound is not. But hopefully I'm gonna make sure it's out of there now. No, it's still in there. Just a peak of it though. Nope. Still in there. Okay, it's gone now. So if I want to, I can hold. Sh I'm still holding control, and then I'm gonna back off the threshold and I can keep going down okay I think that's about as good as I can get it so again let me play before and after with the gate on pay attention to the meters right here Okay, so our noise floor is about, let's say, negative 58 decibels, which is pretty decent. But with this on, look at that. There's no noise at all. No noise at all. And then once this starts, watch this. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. Now, you got to be careful because I noticed that when I had this on, what'll happen is you see this fade of audio it'll just get rid of that and maybe that's what you want and that's what these other controls are for I'm not going to go into these controls here but essentially it, it works the same as a compressor but in reverse and the idea is that um, if you want to have the gate close later or slower I should say 
then you need to adjust these controls right here. But also make sure that the audio that comes in like this is not going to be affected by the gate. Let's hear it, let's hear it right now and watch the meters when it gets to here. That sounds pretty good. Okay, next up, and I'm gonna actually zoom out now from, for the waveform. So next up is my saturation plugin Jam. Now there's a few different GUIs you can use, um, but the idea with this one is I just want to get a microphone preamp, and that in this case is the uh, it's the Smoke P500. That's what it's called in Jam. The real deal preamp, if I remember correctly, is um, the Retro Instruments. 500 which is a tube preamp so let's try this out so what I like to do is I'll start with this plug-in with the output gain all the way down to like negative 10 Actually, I'll go even further than that. I'll go like the negative, I don't know, 15 almost. And then Acoustica added this plus 18 button, which is pretty neat. And what it does is it automatically boosts the input gain um, because the saturation's like optimal point, you have to really boost this. And I recorded this track, let's say, I don't know, around negative 18 decibels full scale average and um, it really needs to be boosted in order for jam to start saturating Now what I'm looking at, because this plugin actually was really well thought out, you see where it says gain reduction plus, and then it doesn't say reduction, but R-E-D means reduction. I'm looking at that while I'm adjusting this big gain knob, and I also brought down the input. And the reason why is it's just easier to adjust this input knob with plus 18 on, because see how it goes from 0 to 1 to 5, and then 10? And then from 10, it goes to 25. So in this little area right here is 15 decibels of gain. Well, I, that's really hard to do. So, you know, when I, when I have it here, it works better. It's just easier to adjust everything. So, again, I'm going to be looking at the gain reduction and then adjusting this gain knob along with the input knob, or I should say the input slider. And then what I'll do when I want to bypass this is just click this bypass button. Whoops, I forgot to take the bypass button off. Now, a cool feature of Jam is, let's say I'm getting too much saturation. Well, I can either dial the input or this giant gain knob down, or, or I can just adjust this mix knob right here and blend it in with the original source.
Now you may ask, why the heck am I doing this? Number one, to change the tone of the source yet again. But if you watch the meters right here, watch the meters. Hold on, let me bypass the, the plugin. So watch the meters, or actually I'll just bypass it with Reaper. Okay, so it's hovering peaks around negative, let's say 11 decibels full scale. Watch when I have it on. See that? So it well, I, I can I can um let me adjust the output gain so it matches a little bit better to the original. I mean, all right, and here's bypassed. One. So it kind of just, it, it evens the sound out a little bit and it, it almost acts as a compressor along with tone shaping. And in general, I like what it did. So um, it, it slightly makes the signal sound a little bit more three-dimensional, but I really do believe Lava does most of that heavy lifting already. Because again, this is what we started off with. You ready? You're going to be blown away by just just these minor adjustments. Oh, it just sounds so much just more professional, uh higher end, hi-fi, bigger. Let me level match it just for the critics. Hold on. So it's about. We'll bring it down by about six decibels when I play it again. Yep, it just, it gets rid of that, like, I don't know if honk is the right word, or it, it kind of sounds almost slightly like a telephone. That, that mid-range, to me, sounds more polished. And like I said, we're evening out the dynamics, and that helps when this track is added into a mix. So, my favorite part is right here, and that is the equalizer. So in this case, I can already tell you that I'm going to be cutting the low mid. So right right away, even before I enable this plugin. Uh, well, first of all, I should mention that I did disable the preamp on this plugin. The reason I did that is because I already had a, a nice preamp going into here. Uh, that's, that's what we were just doing with Jam. And then so for this, I already know I'm going to be cutting... I might be cutting right there, 120, and maybe right here. So I'm going to start off with the low shelf. And if you got to understand that these knobs have, let's see, 18. this one's 18 decibels of range. Okay, I think all of them might be 18. Oh, this is not letting me do that. Hold on. Okay. 18... Yeah, every, every one of these has 18 decibels of range, plus or minus. And so for this one, I'm going to do about 3 decibels to start. And the bypass button. Um, well, I, I still prefer to bypass this way. I 
Okay, it needs a little bit more cutting. And also I'll cut at, um, so this is what's called a filter, a high pass filter. I'll cut around 70 hertz is what this is. If you see HZ down here, that's what, that's what that means, it hertz. And actually, because I enabled that, I'm going to end up cutting the low shelf a little less. Before and after. And that's it. Now, I mean, I have the option if I wanted to, to boost the high end. And I'll show you guys what that sounds like. But I think just that, those two controls did it. That's all I need. I may not even need to use the, the, the equalizer later on. We'll see. Whoops, I accidentally enabled the compressor there. Sorry about that. And this is basically what I do during an entire mix. When I'm first starting out with each track, I will uh, we'll call it massage it to get it to the ballpark of where I want it. I mean, really, if I, if I wanted to tweak this some more, just to get some overall tonality because the one thing about Neve equalizers, at least th these classic vintage ones, is that they do not include a uh, adjustable bandwidth control. Now, you know, if you if I press this, especially if I'm doing cutting, um, it, it'll narrow it down a little bit, but it won't be as precise as an SSL equalizer, which is why I have that as my secondary equalizer. But this sounds wonderful already. And that's about it. So on to the thing that I accidentally just turned on, the compressor. And what I'm going to do is back off the input a little bit. And also, re oh, come on, really? <laughs> oh, this was doing this before, and now it's doing it again. Why are you doing this to me? Oh, my goodness, iLock is garbage, or at least the implementation is. It's because I have way too many... See, if I press that, it's going to show you show you my username. I don't, I don't want to do that. Um, okay. Oh, you know what? I'm not going to be able to show you FG Stress then, I guess. I'll try again. Let's try again. By the way, if you hold Shift, it actually, uh, you, you can move in and output at the same time as my iLock just goes nuts. Uh, I shouldn't have updated these. I don't know what's going on with this plugin, man. I don't know if it's FG Stress or if it's all of them that do this. Mix, virtual mix rack not found. And, and, then, and then it activates itself. What, what? By the way, this is the latest version. I already checked. This is the latest version of this plugin. So unfortunately, I don't think I'm gonna be able to show it to you. Um, so what I'm going to do, if this keeps acting up, is I'll just show you another plugin. How about that?
So the great thing about the Distressor is it pretty much, they, they made it so that the green area is, is essentially transparent. So if you see it peaking up to, what is that? Six decibels of gain reduction. That's what GR stands for. It'll sound nice and transparent. After that, it starts to get a little hairy, as they say in the audio field. Now, what I could do is actually adjust this down uh, to a four to one to a four to one ratio, and then it should sound even more transparent. So I'm going to adjust that. Show, show you guys again holding shift and the idea is you want it to compress but not be so noticeable My other favorite compressor for acoustic guitar, while I'm showing you guys an acoustic guitar track, is the VLA-3A plug-in, which is an emulation of an LA-3A from Teletronics slash Universal Audio. Actually, I think originally it was from uh, U-R-E-I -E Yuri. One, for, one thing I forgot to tell you guys, so normally what I'll do with a compressor is I'll make sure that, and I, and I just zoomed into the track right there, you see these peaks? So we got this one right here, which is the highest, and then this one, sorry, this one's the highest, this is the second highest. So what I'll do is adjust it so that this peak does not sound too smushed, is, is the uh, technical term. There we go. Uh, what was my gain staging? Right around negative 12. You know, if that keeps doing this, I may not have, I may not use Slate Digital plugins until that issue is fixed. So. It's not gain stage, right?
Okay. I forgot to turn steam off. <laughs> oh, man. Hold on. I can't believe it, it keeps doing this with the license garbage. And, you know, the, the thing that I don't like about Slate Digital now is they don't include the legacy installers anymore. Like, you could go back to the previous version that worked. I, I, do, I don't have any other problems with iLock. Like, they are the only ones that I'm having issues with lately, and I just I just don't get it. Um, okay, so moving on. Maybe I'll just have to take this out of the, out of the running here. At least that one works. Oh no, now that one doesn't work. What is going on? <laughs> oh man, what is going on? All right. Okay, Pro DS, I guess I'll just show you guys. Um, so if I was using this on an instrument, I would change this mode to all round. And then um, I think split band. And then we'll just, I don't know, keep it on that setting. So it basically just cuts out the annoying frequencies if you want it to. That's not how I normally use it, but um, yeah. And also you may want to change this look ahead so that's to the maximum setting. Actually, the way that I'm using it right now, it kind of makes Pro DS sound like a tape plugin in a way. <laughs> I'm gonna keep it off though. Okay, so now we have speaking of tape plugins, Jam has a few. We'll just say tape simulations built in. Now this one I believe is the Fatso Junior from Empirical Labs. And uh, it, it's a tape simulator, so let's check it out. Oh yeah, let me adjust this. By the way, this is the other GUI that they offer. So this is like the normal 3D one, and this is the, uh, what they call it, the flat version. So let me adjust this output knob or slider down here.
Yeah, that is th this this going on and off is just unacceptable. So I'm gonna disable it, and we're just gonna have to roll with it like that. I never noticed this has a negative 18 setting until just now, so that's cool. That's really cool. I'll be honest with you, I'm not a fan of the way this sounds right now. So it's it's going off. And let's see, the, the last thing to do. Oh boy, what a difference in gain staging. Hold on. Man, that really screws me up that this is giving me problems. All right, I'm going to have to just... You're getting replaced, distressor. I should mention I just enabled oversampling and reduce this a little bit because I think when I originally was playing with this plugin, it was set for the signals down here, which as you can see, they're not as loud as the ones over here. And that was my mistake. There's something causing it to have some glitches right now. I'm not sure what. Let me make sure that's not in the signal. Oh, that's jam causing that. Oh, let me do this then. Still hearing the art artifact. Okay, that should take care of it. All right, let's do a before and after. Too bad FG stress, stress doesn't work. I'm, I'm just going to delete it now because it's it's stressing me out. <laughs> and let's see. So if I need it, the SSL 9000, 
Let me listen to this and maybe I'll adjust some things. Yeah, we have some low mids build up, so I'll reduce that, um, let's say around 300, 400 hertz, somewhere around there. Just kidding. I'm not going to boost it that high. That's ridiculous. Okay, final touch. Let's add some reverb. My favorite one is Nimbus because I think it really blends in with the source pretty darn well. By default, it's on medium hall, 100% uh, wet mix. So I'm going to adjust this to room and pick a studio that sounds pretty cool. We'll start with one and then adjust them. And then after that, I'll do one more step and that'll be it for this video. Uh-oh, what's going on? I, am I having another problem with licensing issues? Well, that's not good. Let me add it again. Maybe it'll work this time. I should mention I am using, so basically what I do, I don't know if you have to do this, but I normally click the preset. Let me try it. Let me try it. So if I, if I set this to room and then just press right. Okay. Yeah. So the right arrow on your keyboard, it goes through the different presets starting with studio one. That one sounds kind of cool.
Okay, we'll go with Studio 10. And all I got to do with my last setting is this wet dry knob right here. Nice. So that's about it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. Well, I don't think you enjoyed it, but you you, you certainly learned something through this video, I'm sure. Before and after. Without reverb. Okay, I'm done. See ya.